gathered in layman's terms for people like me who, who probably wouldn't understand. Can you tell me a bit about what smouldering MS is? So most people think of multiple sclerosis as having clinical attacks, like relapses we call them, and these new lesions that come and go on MRI, what we call these focal lesions on MRI, and that's kind of our treatment target. But what we've identified, even if we now put people on very effective therapies and we stop relapses and stop these new lesions, a significant proportion of people will continue to deteriorate or worsen. That is what we call smouldering disease. And we know that within the brains of people with multiple sclerosis, there's ongoing uh, processes, particularly uh, some type of inflammation going on. Within the brains, there's uh, so-called B cells and plasma cells, there's early aging. And so this is what smouldering MS, it's the processes that are occurring beyond uh, the focal inflammation. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, yeah, so could you tell me um, what is NIDA? No evident inflammatory disease activity. And this is really relevant to the concept of smouldering MS. So what we do with our therapies is we render people free of activity, no relapses and no new lesions. That's what NIDA is. And we have to go beyond that now because uh, there are processes, as I've said, uh, smouldering processes. And so we now have to have treatments to treat those processes. So these is a, this is going to involve a whole lot of new therapies, uh, combination therapies, and potentially the use of our most effective therapies in the very beginning, because we now begin to realize that some of our therapies actually go beyond NADA. In other words, they pr protect the end organ, the brain and the spinal cord. And we now know if you use those therapies very, very early, people do a lot better. But we can pick up smoldering pathology on MRI scans. So what we do notice is people's brains with multiple sclerosis actually shrink. Uh, it's actually a normal phenomenon. Everybody over the age of 35 have a shrinking brain. People with multiple sclerosis shrink by about two to seven times more. That's part of smoldering MS because even though you may not have relapses or new lesions, your brain may be shrinking more. We're trying to normalize that. Most MS lesions come and then they shrink. Some lesions continue to grow slowly. And they, we call those slowly expanding lesions. That's part of the smouldering pathology. Our MRI scans don't pick up lesions in, in what we call the gray matter. The gray matter is on the surface of the brain, but down in the middle of the brain, there's these nuclei called gray matter. And lesions in those may be driving some of the smouldering pathology as well. So there's lots of things we don't see with our usual MRI scans that can be measured with much more sophisticated techniques that pick up smouldering MS. Because I was diagnosed in 2016, but um, they picked that up in 2013. I had like a numbness in my arm. So when they saw it, they said it just needed to be watched over. But so if we were to go back, let's just say if they understood this smouldering stuff, you would say that I could have had treatment instead of the neurologist just watching to see where it was going. Yes. Back in 2013, we had criteria. You probably would have been diagnosed with a condition called clinically isolated syndrome first event with maybe a lesion or two on your scan, and it wasn't enough to make a diagnosis of MS. What subsequently happened at the end of 2017, we had our diagnostic criteria updated, changed, and now we can actually make the diagnosis in people after one attack. Uh, and so th what happens with multiple sclerosis, the diagnostic criteria evolve as we change them, and it allows us to make the diagnosis earlier and earlier. So you, you probably, weren't diagnosed MS in 2013 because you didn't fulfill the criteria. However, if we had, could apply the 2017 criteria retrospectively, we may have had MS and could have got treatment earlier. Do we as like a community need to put more focus on um, smouldering MS? Yes, definitely. <clears throat> so, I mean, I've been criticised for focusing on this. I'm not the only person talking about smouldering MS. This concept goes back 30 years. And the reason why we need to take <clears throat> seriously, first of all, um, we need to develop treatments. We need to go beyond inflammation. Uh, so if we want to optimize outcomes for people with multiple sclerosis over their lifetime, we need to develop new treatments. So that's the first thing. There are things we can do right now. So there are other processes that speed up or exacerbate smoldering MS. And these are things that we don't tend to focus on in clinic. This is lifestyle issues. Stop smoking, don't drink so much, exercise, diet development of other diseases, comorbidities, stop yourself getting hypertensive, diabetics, um, stop certain medications, st try and prevent infections. Uh, there are a lot of anti-aging mechanisms we can do, improve your sleep, um, modify 
social determinants of health, there's certain social determinants of health that can be modified that we think uh, exacerbate smoldering MS. Loneliness isolation, for example, we think makes those processes worse. So there's lots of things that we as an MS community can do outside of MS to improve outcomes. So I think it's a, a changing focus from just worrying about relapses and making people's MRI activity go away, but the holistic management of multiple sclerosis. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when each episode goes live.